Members, the House is resumed. We are on the third reading of the prohibition of gang insignia and government premises bill. When we broke for the dinner break, Andrew Little had the call and has six minutes remaining if he wishes. I call Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, well, what an interesting interposition that was, because the fascinating thing was that tonight we saw, as we see most uh, evenings, most weeknight evenings, the TV3 news broadcast, and Mr Speaker, it had two interesting stories on it. It had two interesting stories. One was about uh, this bill, and the other was about a cartoon character called the Burka Princess. One of the stories was full of facts, and was fascinating and interesting. The other was a complete work of fiction. And it will stun this House to know that the story on the three news tonight that was a complete work of fiction was the story about this bill. Because what it did, it gave the impression to any member of the viewing public that this bill is going to somehow clean the streets of New Zealand of gang members and those wearing gang patches. And we know, and anybody who has taken a moment to read the bill will know, it will do nothing of the sort. I might say, sir, <coughs> and uh, bearing in mind that I began my contribution tonight uh, mentioning the burqa, uh, is that I was very impressed with the burqa princess. And if we could have the burqa princess, the avenging uh, Islamic woman who could come down and clean up um, evil wrongdoers and all the rest of it, uh, she would have a very important role to play in this country. Unlike this bill, unlike this bill, and Mr Speaker, the point I want to make is that I, I, I was making at the time of the dinner break was this. There are plenty of things that this bill won't do. For one thing, there are nasty, insidious gangs that this bill will not go near. One of them is the National Front. <clears throat> they wear a uniform, all right, and they, uh, they wear attachments and wear their hair in certain styles, the skinhead. They wear the tattoos, they wear dark clothing, this, and they, are, they uh, intimidate, they stand over, they do evil things, but this bill will not do anything about them. And these people will continue to turn up in public places and they will do their intimidation, they will do their standover stuff, and all the bleating from the members opposite will not make a tinker's cuss of difference to organisations like that. Because the reality about the National Party is they come to this House, they puff out their chest, they sound tough, they talk tough, but they don't know what they're doing. And they don't care. They don't care about the vast majority of New Zealanders who want to go about their work and their lives in a safe, peaceful community. They want window dressing. They do window dressing. Whether it's the streets of Fielding, whether it's the streets of, of the far north, they will, they'll do the window dressing. And I'll get them a few points in the, next, in the next poll, but I won't fix the real problems of New Zealand. And so, sir, what about, what about particular areas uh, that this bill covers? Well, it says that it covers uh, government premises. What about kids' parks? What about the beach? What about those places where you go and have a barbecue on a sunny Sunday evening? It won't touch any of those areas. What about city council-controlled areas, like parks that are full of trees and without a single man-made structure? Gangs turn up there when families are trying to have their family picnics. It won't make a blind bit of difference to that situation or to those people. And so the gangs wearing their thuggish patches can carry on and do their thing. We all know the problem about gangs, and we don't shy away from that problem. We know that they are criminal enterprises. And some of them are pretty dopey, and some of them are very cunning, but at the end of the day, what underpins the gangs is a criminal enterprise. And so what that needs is genuine, serious measures to address those problems. Not flim-flam fluffery like this, not puffery that looks like it does something but does nothing, real measures. And it starts with the people, starts with the social problems and the economic problems, deals with the bad conduct, provides real measures to deal with bad conduct, the standover tactics, the intimidation, the theft, the violence uh, and the burglaries and all the rest of it but actually takes real measures. The sort of stuff that the Honourable Phil Goff introduced when he was a Minister of Justice. Because the one thing that Phil Goff didn't do, he didn't leave it up to, for private members' bills to look and give the appearance of doing something serious about a serious social problem. He took the responsibility himself because he was a good Minister. And we haven't had a good Minister of Justice for at least the last five years. And that's part of the problem. We have 
members, backbenchers, having to parade through this house looking as if they are doing something serious. Well, that's not happening. If we want to get real about organised crime and get real about gangs, we need real legislation that's going to address the real problems. David Clinton from the Green Party was right, and I was at the Justice Coalition launch this afternoon, and it's time to get smart about crime. It's time to get smart about crime, and that is about, when it comes to the gangs, understanding the gangs, understanding what drives them, and dealing with those issues, and understanding the antisocial conduct they engage in, and addressing the antisocial conduct, and working with communities to make them safer, as the Mutapata Area School has shown they can do, uh, the principal of which tonight said he was very concerned about this legislation because he didn't think it would work. And we need to actually take real steps, not the half measures that are represented by this bill. I call Paul Foster-Bell.